Thank you. My name's Neil Anthony Sims. I'm with Kampachi Farms, an open ocean mariculture operation uh, based in Kona, Hawaii and La Paz in Mexico. I want to speak to you uh, on something this afternoon that, that's outside of our critical commercial path, but I think is on a, a critical path for the planet. It's what we call the IMAGINE concept, which is integrated marine agronomy and geoengineering. It's ways of looking at, at mariculture as an environmental imperative. What are the benefits that you can derive from mariculture in the open ocean? And then how might this be an economic incentive for seasteading? This is an open ocean mariculture operation, a trial that we ran uh, over the last year. Uh, Lisa ha had mentioned the, the crisis of peak phosphorus, and I'm sure that keeps a lot of you awake at, at, at night. Most of you probably lie awake at night and fret about global warming. But I would caution you, global warming is not what you should be panicked about. Because the results are, the, the long-term prognostications are dubious, there's argument, there's dissent. What you should really be concerned about is ocean acidification. Because it is indisputable. It's just a simple function of the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere that drives increased CO2 in the oceans. It increases the acidification of the ocean. It's immediate. It is happening right now. And it is going to have immense impacts on the ocean ecosystems with mass extinctions. It's going to impact our future food supplies and it's going to impact the economies of the planet. There's lots of hand wringing that goes on about ocean acidification. If you go and Google this, there's lots of uh, ecologists that will model the potential impacts or physiologists that will look at individual impacts on individual species. I haven't yet seen a single solution out there, except there was some work looking at, at global climate mitigation earlier on for iron seeding, which is adding iron to tropical waters to try and suck up the CO2 out of the uh, surface waters. But there are problems with iron seeding because of it, it, its uh, short temporal scale and the kinds of blooms that you created and then what was the long-term fate of that carbon. What the Imagine concept is all about is using open ocean mariculture as a passive nutrient pump. So basic open ocean mariculture, as is practiced in the, the few cutting edge sites where, where it's in practice today, such as in Kona, Hawaii, is you take products such as soybeans, which suck the CO2 out of the atmosphere over Iowa, put it into a feed pellet, and then feed it to your fish in your open ocean mariculture site. And that then leads to some carbon sequestration to, uh, if you're in deep enough water, to the abyssal plain, some dissolved nutrients down current of that that will stimulate a, a pelagic trophic cycle, which will then lead to more um, serendipitous, uh, fortuitous uh, carbon sequestration there just by the fact that you're stimulating productivity. The imagined concept is actually if you take this basic uh, elements of open ocean mariculture and now you look at ways to enhance the carbon flow and sequester carbon to the abyssal plain there through a process we might call ocean afforestation. Essentially, it's the same sort of principle as what Lisa was speaking about, but it's rather using macroalgae. I like macroalgae because you can hang on to it. Macroalgae actually has an attachment that's called a hold fast, and you like to be able to hold fast to it. But macroalgae will take these dissolved nutrients and it will also absorb CO2 out of the water through the process of photosynthesis. You'll then have some enhanced incidental uh, carbon sequestration, but the macroalgae will also provide potential sources of food, of feed and of fuel. And this is where you can start to really drive what might be called a, a, a true blue economy. Because the food might be not just uh, the algae wrapped around your sushi, but it might also be um, the extracts that, that, that are used in, in so many of, of the feeds that you will eat already today, extracts uh, such as the carrageenans. The feed might be then used for uh, herbivorous fish or for other land animals if you must eat. Uh, land animals, and then that becomes a source of food for the blue economy. The fuel, the key here is to find ocean-based biodigesters that can um, break down the compounds in the macroalgae and produce methane and then sequester uh, carbon dioxide hydrates to the abyssal plain. Put them in the abyssal plain, get them out of the biosphere. And then also you've got some nutrients, some uh, byproducts from the biodigesters that will then flow back and stimulate more macroalgae growth. It's a complex model. We haven't really, but it will absorb more CO2 as those nutrients. It, it, it's a complex model, but we do see evidence out there already that this can occur. This is macroalgae growing on the top of a buoy 
next to a, an open ocean farm, the, the farm site in Kona that I had co-founded. There's macroalgae and coral, but look at the macroalgal filamentous algae at the top there. This is a way that we can sequester carbon by using this macroalgae. And rather than just using any old macroalgae, find something that is fast growing, perhaps, such as gracilaria, and use this to pull the CO2 out of the water, and that will then stabilise your pH, increase your pH, and reduce the acidification. The estimates are that the ocean is at the moment absorbing about 8 billion tonnes of CO2 per year. We can counter this by using 800 squares of 60 nautical miles by 60 nautical miles under Gracilaria culture. This is about 7% 7 of the tropical band of ocean space. Now that's a pretty scary concept to talk about 7% of So let's not go there just yet. Let's start to think about how Imagine might be an incremental tool that we use here, that it's scalable that you might initially start to use macroalgae buffers around those areas of reef that you want to protect that are most vulnerable. Where we are at the moment with this, as I said, it's still very much at the early stages of vetting out. And so we're looking for funding to help us go out and bring together the experts that can really uh, bring these concepts together and then start to lay out an experimental plan to go out and vet and validate the imagined concept further. It's a three-stage project that we're working through with the Seasteading Institute here. The initial phase is probably $300,000. The uh, test stage then that we'd go out and we envisage three modules for testing here that would be perhaps half a million dollars each. So we're looking for around $1.8 million over the next three to four years. Why do Seasteaders care about this? It's the prairie principle. You didn't go out and build towns in the middle of Kansas first. No, you went out there and you built farms, and then the farms stimulated the economic activity that created the, the towns there. It's a sense of having a, a pull. By creating an economic incentive here for ac economic activity out in the open ocean, it's a pull for us out in the open ocean rather than a push. We're not getting pushed by the political structure. We're going out there because there is an economic incentive. And then there is also because we're doing this in an environmentally sound way and we're countering uh, the, the CO2 and the ocean acidification, there, there is a potential for carbon credits as an additional economic incentive there. Imagine is all about using the economic incentive and the ecological imperative. It's using open ocean mariculture to do the right thing by the planet. And who might thank us? Thank you very much. <laughs>